Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to prove the most famous equation in the universe. E equals mc squared. It is one of my favorite equations as it explains almost everything. It is why the sun shines. It is why you can turn a piece of rock, which is uranium, into an atom bomb, the energy of an atom bomb you get. It is why the star twinkle. It is also something that lights up the universe. So, in 1905, Albert Einstein invented this equation to put forward an idea that is, the mass is somehow related to energy and this equivalence was in the form of a small equation E equals mc squared E is the energy of radiation or, or uh, you can say energy and in its usual sense m is mass which is equivalent to that energy and c is the speed of light and in doing so he had assumed that the speed of light is same in all reference frames basically this is what we get from the second postulate of the special theory of relativity and today I'll try to prove E equal to mc squared using Newtonian mechanics now the challenge here is that we know that light consists of photons some packets of energy photons now these photons are massless particles but they have some momentum so there is an interesting aspect which we can discuss uh, in this regard so let us begin this derivation of e equal to mc square which is rather simple as it involves simple uh, some non calculus mathematics like there is no calculus involved here so basically the derivation or you can say the proof some somewhat proof we have a glorious proof which is the atom bomb itself but the proof of this famous equation is based on this famous thought experiment which was put forward by either Einstein in 1906 or I think also by Henry Poincar which, who was also a mathematician uh, around that time uh, perhaps in 1904 uh, so basically one of them had uh, framed this thought experiment which says that there is let's say we have a container now imagine that this container is in deep space away from all gravitational forces it is in fact away from the influence of all kinds of forces there are no forces there are no nearby planets nothing it is deep space in deep space there is a container which is floating there is no gravitation no friction nothing no forces are acting on this isolated container so we have an isolated container and there is a source of light this is a source of light let's say this is the source S and there is an absorber of this light source, let's say. So basically this isolated system, a container and a, which has a source of light is stationary in deep space. And now what happens is that this source of light shoots a beam. Now this beam, we here, let us assume that uh, this <coughs> beam consists of a finite amount of radiation which is let us say some finite number of photons but for simplicity let us assume that this radiation of energy E has or is equivalent to one photon of the same energy like for simplicity we assume that there is only one photon like not a number of photons let us say that one photon is emitted of the energy E and that is equivalent to some finite radiation. So one photon is emitted and what happens is that something non-intuitive or perhaps intuitive from 
a frame of reference and non intuitive from a different reference frame i will draw the frame of reference also so this is that light source which emits a light or you can say a photon and you observe that this container recoils back in this direction and finally let us say the system again comes to rest in this location in space and let's say that let me first draw this defining diagram this is going to help us in our equations and we are almost done and we are left with yeah we are almost done now the thing is that this radiation has a momentum this is very interesting a radiation consists of photons photons are massless so how come they have some momentum yeah they have and that momentum is a function of its energy the energy of the radiation the momentum of this photon is equal to its energy let's say the energy is e divided by the speed of this light wave c is a constant so the photon has this momentum p which is independent of c it does not depend on c it only depends on e and this is the relation basically this phenomenon is known as radiation pressure and uh, it's quite interesting at this point we discussed that see photons are having this momentum now from newtonian mechanics we know that momentum is mass times velocity linear momentum but how can this be possible like how can a photon which is massless how can that have some momentum so now the real interesting part arrives for the moment let us not get into that dilemma because that will reveal the whole uh, you know puzzle so i want to keep the puzzle and give you some suspense and now what we do is that let's say that okay so for obvious reasons we know that linear momentum is always conserved the linear momentum of this isolated system of box plus photon let's say that uh, this box plus photon is our system which is isolated the box was stationary initially a photon was emitted from this source of light and we observe that the box recoils this is because it is because that of the reason that the linear momentum is conserved so basically when this photon moves from this left end to the right end of this box then it is as if you are shooting a bullet from a gun and that gun recoils due to the momentum of that bullet conserve the momentum of that bullet so similarly here the box should recoil backwards to conserve the linear momentum of that bullet of this momentum uh, of this photon sorry so basically uh, we can say that uh, let's say the recoil velocity is v recoil velocity as you can see the diagram here the recoil velocity is v and basically this is the final position when this photon reaches this absorber it hits this and imparts its momentum to this end this end of the box basically the system is at rest now it comes to a, a halt at this point so this was the initial position a light is a light beam is emitted you can say a photon is emitted for simplicity and as to conserve the law of conservation of momentum says that we need to conserve this linear momentum so this uh, container recoils in the backward direction this is the final position of our system of light and this box basically photon and box so now if the velocity of this box is v let the mass of this box without this source all of these things let us say that that mass is m so we know that the momentum of this box the recoil momentum of this box that momentum let us denote it by capital p it is equal to this m times this v now 
let us assume that a small time interval delta has elapsed so basically in that same time interval delta this box has moved this much basically this much this is the distance this box has moved this box i am drawing it and then i am going away so that you can see yeah this is the distance the box has moved delix in time delta so as you can see delta is the time interval in which this photon travels from this end to this end and that is the same time interval which is obvious in which this box travels a distance del x along the negative x direction now i am drawing an inertial frame of reference x axis y axis and this is an observer and this is the z axis as you can see <coughs> that is our inertial frame of reference i this is the observer the box is moving along negative x direction photon is moving along positive x direction the momentum of the box is denoted as capital p that is mv and the box has moved a distance del x in time del t this is the distance which the box has moved backwards and now so we can say that the velocity of the box is del x by del t some elementary ideas of kinematics rate of change of position with respect to time basically del x by del t that is the velocity we replace this in the momentum equation so we get momentum of this box as m times del x by del t now the thing is that what is this del t it is the time interval which has elapsed when this photon went from this end to this end that is from here to here now let's say this is the point a this point let's say this point or let us say yeah this point is a this was the initial position the box went backward and so let us name this final point as some b so you see this photon did not travel the length of the box effectively this photon has traveled only this much distance this much let's denote that as capital l the photon did not travel the whole length of the box because photon is moving in positive x direction box is moving in opposite direction negative x so how can that be possible so because this is obvious so this photon has only traveled from this point to this point that is the observer but the box has also moved this del x distance so basically we denote this effective distance traveled by this photon from this point to this point that is l you see the box has also moved at that time when the photon moved so basically we can say that the time interval delta as the distance traveled by the photon by the speed of photon that is speed of light now we replace this delta in this equation and we get that we can get an expression now the thing is that if we follow newtonian mechanics then according to the law of conservation of momentum this momentum the momentum of the photon must be equal to this momentum the momentum of the box so we should we are getting an expression like m del x by i am replacing del t as l by c so which becomes e by c so as you can see this is the momentum of this box some terms are substituted as i said i uh, substituted del t as l by c in this equation so i get this which is equal to momentum of this photon this is in accordance with law of conservation of momentum 
it's quite obvious right now what we are going to do is that let me rub off a bit rub off this part perhaps now you see that this much is okay now the trouble starts the trouble is that how is this even possible momentum is conserved well if you are standing here in an inertial frame and observing this chaos you i by chaos i mean that something bizarre is happening here like how come the box all of a sudden move on its own like it just started moving backwards like you are here you are external to this system so for you it's quite bizarre that this box is going backwards so actually it is violating newton's first law of motion which states that objects which are in rest or of uniform motion along a straight line they will continue to do so they will continue to be in rest or in uniform motion along a straight line unless they are acted upon by some external force but we had assumed that this box is in deep space away from all kinds of forces there is no external force acting on the system so how come this box plus photon system move out all of a sudden like for you this is quite bizarre you are standing here in an inertial frame observing this whole chaos externally so you say that no this is not possible but then so it is an evident contradiction einstein proposed that to resolve this evident contradiction he proposed that the center of mass of this whole photon plus box system must be at rest that is the center of mass of a system of particles that is stationary unless acted upon by an external force the particles can move due to some internal forces that is what is happening the box and the photon they are moving due to some internal forces but the center of mass of the box plus photon system must be constant it must be stationary what einstein said is that for this to happen for the center of mass of this box plus photon system to be at rest that is it is in the same location at this point and at this point this can only happen when we assume photon has some mass let us say the mass of this photon is m we denote it by small m now well we have to assume that the photon has some mass small m and if that is so 